Hi everyone, Renee here and with this video I'm just going to be reviewing and showing you some of the products I've been using and loving this month. Actually also September because I completely forgot to do anything. So we're going to start off with something that came as a complete and really, really pleasant surprise. And that is this cleansing oil from Fourth Ray Beauty and it's their BFD cleansing oil. I try so many cleansing oils and not often do they make it to my favorites because it's really hard to do better than the products that I already truly, truly love and have loved for years and years and years. So many of you have been asking me since their launch, which was recent, just a couple of months ago, to review their products. This brand epitomizes millennial marketing. It's basically, you know, we are responsible, we're environmentally responsible, there's no crap in our skincare, no fillers, but we are rose quartz infused. So what I love about this is it actually reminds me a lot of this. This is one of my all-time favorite cleansing oils. This is um, on the richer side. To me, this is also one of those really nice, rich cleansing oils to use. It's very satisfying. It feels really great when you're using it on your skin. Everything just kind of melts off. This is an emulsifying cleansing oil, so it rinses off completely clean on my skin. Um, you, there's no need for a washcloth. This also has a slight, very natural sort of herbal scent to it as well, which, you know, I like. It's got sunflower seed oil, jojoba, juniper berry, meadow foam, dermatologist tested, vegan, cruelty-free, the price is great. Second thing that's kind of been a skin saver for me is this Hyg All-in-One Essence Balance. There are two all-in-one essences. One is Balance, which is the one I love, and there's also one called Fresh, which is better for oily skin types. It's more like a gel. So every year, this time of year is when I bring out my oil essences. It's a good balance between oil and hydration. So my routine is changing up to have more lipid layers than just hydration layers at this point. So there are some days where I replace toner entirely with this. Other days, um, I will use it after my toner. But this is also an all-in-one product. So if you wanna minimalize your skincare routine, you could use this to replace um, a toner, an essence, and an oil serum. So before using it, you shake it up to evenly distribute the oil and the liquid. But otherwise, you can see when the um, layers separate that this is 20% oil blend and 80% essence. The oil blend is sunflower seed, jojoba, squalane, and macadamia nut. The essence is absolutely beautiful. It's um, based in birch sap, which is so infinitely hydrating. It's got the fermented yeast, but also this has the ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acid composition, um, which is just so good at helping our skin defend itself against trans epidermal water loss. This is such a simple but effective formula. It uses birch sap and natural moisturizing factors to not just make sure that our skin um, is hydrated and properly hydrated, but also that that is kind of sealed in. So this is a great toner or essence for dry skin, especially during this time of month. But it's also a great oil substitute for those of you with oily skin or anyone who just doesn't like the feel of pure oil on your skin. For me, this actually just feels like a real hydrating um, and refreshing essence. There's a slight bergamot scent to it. You don't need a lot, but it's just really, um, this has been a skin saver. This cream from Youth to the People, it's their Adaptogen Deep Moisture Cream. This really is a brand where I struggle to find things I do not like. Every single thing I've tried from them, I have absolutely loved. Actually, the first product I ever tried made it in my favorites, monthly favorites, like two years ago, and that was their other cream. That one was a beautiful, lightweight, refreshing, hydrating gel cream type texture great for combination normal to oily skin or any skin that is dehydrated regardless of the type. Um, this one on the other hand is her more intense counterpart. This one is thicker, it's creamier, it's more emollient, it's more moisturizing, but also it's kind of packed with antioxidants as well. I'm a big believer of ingesting adaptogens. Drinking medicinal soups to replenish energy and to increase focus was sort of the way of life. As for adaptogens and skincare, I love some shrooms and I love a good fungus, whether for its hydrating properties, but also mainly for its antioxidant properties. But also I love medicinal skincare. I started using this before the weather suddenly turned. It didn't feel that heavy in the summer, but actually now that it's like dry and much colder, it feels moisturizing enough. So I guess it's adaptogenic in that way. And because of that, I really feel like this would work for all skin conditions. This definitely is a creamier moisturizer. There's no real scent to this. It just smells like scentless cream. 
A real treat is this jelly mask from Isn't Tree. It's the Real Rose Calming Mask. If you love Rose Damaskin as much as I do, and you love a good hydrating jelly mask, such a big fan of Isn't Tree. Clean, simple, minimal, concentrated, maximum benefits, and really good value. This beautiful mask, which looks like strawberry jelly, it's actually really satisfying to apply, is 60% rose damaskina extract. It also has rose oil in it, but rose hip oil as well. It's got eight different essential amino acids. It's got the natural moisturizing factors. Um, yeah, this is just such a treat for your face. The minute it goes on your face, so satisfyingly cooling, uber hydrating, which has been so nice during um, the drier weather that we've been having. I keep this on for a really long time. I mean, you could keep it on for about 10 to 20 minutes. Um, that's what they direct you to do, but I can keep it on for like a good 30 minutes. There have been times where this has been so good at soothing and calming down my really angry, inflamed, irritated skin. Um, my favorite part though is, and I love it when masks do this, is when I'm rinsing off, I can already feel the transformation. My my skin already feels so smooth and like just really smooth and silky um, while I'm while I'm washing this off. Super Goop's 100% mineral matte and poreless sunscreen is one of the best mineral sunscreens I've tried. The universal tint in this, but more so the texture as well, makes it one of the most blendable. 100% mineral sunscreen. This can blend into so many different skin tones, but also um, it doesn't have any coverage, so it is just merely a tint. This is also different from a lot of other sunscreens in that it works as a primer, so it is weightless on the skin, and you just apply this over your skincare before your makeup, and it doesn't feel like there's any layer. It's just not heavy. This legit glides on your skin, smooths out the texture, kind of blurs everything out. Um, you will not have any shine, but it doesn't like rob me of glow either. It just gets rid of shine. The other sunscreen that I'm just like, oh, so good, is this one from Claire's. Their Soft Airy UV Essence. I even love the name of this, okay? These use my favorite chemical UV filters, Uvenol A for the UVA rays and Uvenol T150 for the UVB rays. If you want to know more about these filters, then I will link a video that I did about safe chemical sunscreen filters, my favorite European and Asian sunscreens. Because these are not allowed in the US, but they've been created to offer the most powerful protection, but also with the least amount of irritation. These kind of work similarly to the mineral UV filters, whereby they sit sort of on top of your skin. They don't kind of absorb into your, um, you know, there's no alcohol in here at all. So it's gentle and it's great for sensitive skin. I love a water-based gel sunscreen. It is actually really hydrating on the skin but also weightless. This has a good amount of my two favorite B vitamins. One is vitamin B5 and B3. One for hydration and obviously B3 is niacinamide which is just good for everything. There's also other soothing and skin protecting ingredients. There's um, beta-glucan, elantoin, and there's also sea buckthorn. Honestly your skin actually feels good after using that. It's not something I can say about many sunscreens, but yes. I also want to talk about Jordan Samuels, Hydrate the Mist. Jordan Samuels, how much do you love him? This has legit become one of my all-time favorite mists because it is so hydrating. The hydration stays in your skin. It leaves a beautiful coating on top of your skin that just feels like it's just sealing everything in. And no, it's not a sticky layer. It just doesn't evaporate into thin air. And as soon as I get out of the shower, I miss this on my face and my skin is just set for the rest of the evening. I don't even need to apply other products right away. And also, I just really appreciate that he uses a hibiscus hydrosol base. I love hydrosols. So hibiscus in certain circles is known as the Botox plant. I mean, let's just relax here a little bit. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be like Botox, but however, it does have a great reputation for skin firming, but also protecting your skin from the environment. But also there are some natural acids in hibiscus. So it will give you sort of a slight AHA effect, give you some sort of skin refining, skin resurfacing. There's nothing not to like in this. It's got the sodium hyaluronate. It's got the antioxidant plant extracts. It's got the soothing cucumber. It's to me. This is such an interesting product to me. This is from Odesite, their Adventurine Lip Serum. Now, Odesite is one of those brands where I get a little overwhelmed because I think it's based on just a bunch of boosters, so there's just a lot of them. I love a good concentrated lip product. This is a lip serum, and I figure 
why not? Um, that's not to say that I'm not always using this on its own. I really am. It is actually enough. Nourishing. Besides a gorgeous nourishing blend of oils and butters, this also contains CoQ10 and a derivative of vitamin C, THD. This is meant to target those fine vertical lines that form on your lips, which during this time of year, and especially, especially during winter, is actually a real problem for me and always gets really sore and, and irritating and sensitive around here. But even though the formulation sounds rich, the texture of it is not. It goes lightly on your lips and it does sort of sink in. It just kind of moisturizes your skin and doesn't sit on top coating it. But your skin, your lips are really soft. So when you first apply it in the beginning, you've got that cooling sensation from like possibly the rosemary, maybe a little bit of mint. But then that turns into a kind of warming sensation, but not the kind of heat you get from like bee venom products that are really irritating. It isn't an irritating heat. It just sort of lightly warms warms and it makes you feel like you know the circulation in your lips are going that comes from the capus gum in the formula so the woo woo part of this which i kind of appreciate because it's kind of a very luxurious aspect of the packaging is that um the rollerball is an adventuring crystal which is known for giving good luck and prosperity so this is not an inexpensive product for your lips this is very extra in fact this kind of is the same price that i would pay for an eye oil but yeah i, I like it I've been using Brio Geo Scalp Revival. In fact, I've been using their entire line. My, this condition of my scalp is very important to me and I put a lot of focus on it. It's not like I'm just cleansing and conditioning my hair anymore. I feel like it needs to be treating my scalp at all times. It takes a lot for me to use a scrub shampoo that is not Christoph Robin's salt scrub, but this one has been absolutely great. This is actually a product that I feel can be used a lot more often, whereas I feel like Christoph Robin is something that you will use weekly. This doesn't contain sulfates in it. Overall, it's a gentler wash, but it's a very substantial wash. You will still have the foaming sensation and all of that in your hair does feel really clean afterwards. I really love the charcoal in this. I feel like it's actually really helped the condition of my scalp. They say that this will treat dandruff. I think this alone will not treat your dandruff, but I think as a whole system, a whole scalp care system with the serum, that definitely treats your the whole situation. I know a lot of you are gonna be asking me which one's better, this or Christoph Robin, which one should I get? Totally reasonable. I will highlight the differences because I don't think that this is gonna make me not use the salts, Christoph Robin's salt scrub. And I don't think Christoph Robin's salt scrub is gonna make me not use this anymore. I appreciate them for two very, very different reasons. I actually like that this has so many natural ingredients in it that I love. It's gentle, it's effective. I also love that it's really refreshing on the scalp because it has tea tree in it. I love the charcoal. Christoph Robin, on the other hand, is just a pure, luxurious experience to me. It is a treatment that you can use all the time um, because it can, it really gets rid of everything that is just sitting on your scalp. So this is something that I really feel is so necessary for me um, every week, every once in a while. It gets rid of everything, but also the Christoph Robin, the minute you're rinsing it, it's almost transformative while you use it. The minute you rinse it off, you can already feel the difference of, of how your scalp feels and even the hair around your crown. Nope. There's not a single product I get through faster than hand washes. Um, I really love a good hand wash, but I have to constantly be replacing it. This one from Folane has been one of my favorites yet. This is sort of not just a hand wash. It's um, sort of an all purpose. You can use it on your hands, but you can also use it to wash your pets, your children, your dishes, you know, everything. This is a luxury upgraded Castile soap, but I'm not going to lie. It's the lemongrass scent that really gets me. I love the smell of lemongrass. It makes me think of Thailand. I feel like I'm in a Thai, Thai spa. I'm so excited because they recently have a pop-up in New York City so I can actually refill this, which is great. It's a wonderful thing. This is all glass. And For body cleansers, I've really been loving this one from Goop. It's the G-Tox Glacial Marine Clay Body Cleanser. I've been really loving cream clay cleansers for the face. It started with Fivena and then Pacifica, which I talked about. This is a cream clay cleanser for your body. And it's just so beautiful. It's really kind of moisturizing as you wash, 
but it also foams up. So it's satisfying. You do feel very clean after you use this. They have no sulfates in it. It's a gentle cleanser. It's got that rosemary, mint, and grapefruit scent, which is just super refreshing. It just kind of awakens the senses. These are all kind of my favorite scents to use in shower products. This contains hand harvested glacial marine clay. This also has moringa oil, which um, is a super antioxidant oil, but also I've mentioned before, that's kind of like the cleansing oil, nature's cleanser. This is just an uplifting shower experience. Um, you feel like you're really treating yourself, but also um, this is just really nicely moisturizing, non-stripping, great for this time of year. I've kind of been really impressed with Goop's Bath & Body line. Atelier Cologne has my favorite fragrances at the moment. I'm using them all the time. If you like one of the combinations, you're going to like all of them because there are subtle differences, but the differences are ones that you can appreciate. So I went ahead and got this set, and I've been enjoying every single one of these scents. The white flowers and citrus are so my thing. That's always what I go for. But even like the Santal and the cedars and the more woody um, notes, those are just so beautiful. I love wearing those too. Um, unisex, a woman will smell great in it. A man will smell amazing in it. I mean, these are just, um, yeah, this pretty much has all eight of their scents and I'm really, really enjoying it. So in my fall makeup video, I talked about how I just love those eyeshadows that are just one simple wash of color. A lot of you guys recommended that I try Armani. So these are the two colors I'm obsessed with, number 24 and um, number nine. The number 24, it just brightens and evens out the color of your lid. And so when I apply it and I only apply this, my both my eyes just look so much brighter this also does not budge there will never be i mean there's a lot of oil that always accumulates on my upper eyelid and i always get a crease there's i mean this stops any kind of creasing whatsoever in fact i feel like it's kind of powerful it even stops my um eye makeup from transferring but it's just one of those really subtle subtle effects that make a big difference number nine is the most beautiful sort of beige bronze subtle shimmery eye tint it just adds so much subtle elegance to your look and you know i i just love that about armani i'm also going to mention one of my favorite new discoveries it's a snack i hope you guys don't mind that i'm bringing snacks into my favorite matcha sesame chocolate from the matcha reserve so ridiculously good. In fact, the reason why I'm obsessed with this is because it's almost exactly the same as one of my favorite all-time chocolates from Royce. And Royce is a Japanese chocolate brand, which is one of my favorites. But they have a, a matcha chocolate that's dispersed with sesame seeds. And it's just one of the best things I've ever tasted. It's like crunch, except for with black sesame seeds and the most divine sort of matcha flavored chocolate that's just not too sweet. And it's just really, really delicious. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed my favorites. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'm wishing you great skin health. Bye.